Earth that there's been a major attack on the Pentagon. The first live satellite images are just coming through now, and oh my god, the building just looks practically leveled. We don't know the number of casualties just yet, but first responders are on the scene. And they're trying to put out the fire and find as many bodies as possible. You reach dogs, Norris. You know what to do. <coughs> Alex. Hey, hey, Ken, it's, uh, it's your dad. Um, I think we got, um... We, we, got, we got disconnected. <coughs> disconnected. Stay tuned to Channel 5 News, and we'll bring you all the latest updates as they come. prayers go out to all the most the significant members. attack on American soil since 9 Just one of several attacks from a terrorist ISIS cell. official and military official has collapsed. The question of a U.S. retaliation. The president is meeting with his security council to discuss options. The defense department is meeting with several military contracting companies and weapons specialists. Sources are telling me that military officials have reached out to the CEO of Black Sun Weapons and Technology, Kyle Norris, for a potential the defense contract and senseless acts of terror. The global community has responded with a tremendous Today, the support. White House has has declared a new war on terror. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. Stay tuned for further instructions. This is not a test.
report on climate change predicts dire consequences for the United States. The National Climate Assessment was released Friday. It says the Earth's temperature is rising at an unprecedented rate, putting almost all the blame on human activity. The findings also show the U.S. economy could shrink by 10 percent by the end of the century. Critics accuse the White House of trying to bury the report by releasing it the day after Thanksgiving. It's a phrase that has come to define decades of hostility between two countries. Death to America is a rallying call for Iranian leaders to bring demonstrators to the streets. It's a polarizing statement, with many defending as a minimum response for decades of harmful American policies in the Middle East. At least 20 civilians, including women and children, have been killed in the U.S.-led coalition's airstrikes on Syria's Deir ez-Zor. 
The airstrikes targeted the city of Hajin. Nine children and eight women were among the victims. Late last month, Syrian media revealed that the U.S.-led coalition had shelled several locations in Hajin city with white phosphorus. The coalition has been carrying out airstrikes against what it claims to be Daesh targets inside Syria since September 2014. But the attacks have claimed numerous civilian lives. The attacks were carried out without any authorization from the Syrian government. begin once again though with the Saudis and the entire question that the whole world seems to be asking is there any limit to what they can or cannot do it, see this is this is not only about Jamal Khashoggi in fact it's as much as anything else about the horrors taking place in Yemen as well we've been telling you now for weeks about just how dreadful the situation in Yemen has become tonight though we learn that the reality maybe even worse, worse than what we thought. You see, the actual number of children that are dying in Yemen because of this war we've been telling you about, that we as Americans are in large measure funding, is even worse than we had originally reported. Remember the numbers we gave you last week? Well, here now is RT America's Dan Cohen with the latest. Well, the murder of Jamal Khashoggi has brought the Trump administration's ties with Saudi Arabia into the spotlight. The crisis in Yemen has reached new levels of horror. The humanitarian group Save the Children says 85,000 kids under five years old have died since the war in Yemen started. And they say that's a conservative estimate. 85,000, that's equivalent of all children under five years old here in Washington, D.C., all dead four times over. What's killing them? Severe acute malnutrition. In other words, they're starving to death. This baby is just one of the 18 million Yemenis the UN says could soon die of malnutrition. When I do the breakfast, I pray that we will be able to have lunch. And when lunch comes, I wonder what we'll have for supper. I wonder what to prepare or cook. And when you go to sleep, you start thinking, dear God, what am I going to feed them tomorrow? Saudi and Emirati forces imposed a blockade on Yemen about a year ago. And since June, they've sought to take control of Hodaida port, the lifeline of Yemen where the majority of aid enters the country. In recent weeks, a dramatic increase in airstrikes have prevented that aid from entering. 150,000 children are trapped in Hodaida city, unable to escape or receive aid. While the war goes on and ravages the country, President Trump says Iran is responsible. That, despite any Iranian presence in Yemen, whether direct or by proxy, has ever been proven. The UN Special Envoy Martin Griffiths visited Yemen to promote a ceasefire. The Saudi-backed government in Yemen has agreed to peace talks in Sweden, and the Houthi rebels said they would comply with the UN request if the Saudis and Emiratis would. Under international pressure, the Saudis and Emiratis have pledged $500 million to address the food crisis, though it's unclear if they would even allow the aid to be delivered. While an effort to debate and vote on U.S. involvement in the war on Yemen was blocked by House Republicans earlier this month, California Congressman Ro Kahana has introduced another resolution to invoke the War Powers Act and force Congress to vote, and now has 89 co-sponsors, including House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. It's a bill that would likely pass in the new Democratic Majority House in January, but with an estimated 130 children dying every day, it's a vote that can't come soon enough. Reporting in Washington, Dan Cohen, RT.
In the year 2065, war destroyed our world. In our desperation, we searched the stars for a new home. And just when we thought we'd found one, we realized we were not alone. We have the most important mission. We must not fail. We are the last. And why, I hear you ask? Life. Survival is built into the very genome of every living thing to endure, to evolve, at any cost. For billions of years, the planet Earth was home to many beautiful and wonderful creatures, all living in harmony with their environment. It includes, of course, the human race, the so-called masters of their fate, the dominant species who, over millions of years of evolution, reshape their environment for their every need. The bombs dropped so fast that no one had time to say goodbye, to pray, or to call their loved ones. The world's population barely knew a war had started, but in the blink of an eye, our home was gone. 